This LAist podcast is supported by the Los Angeles Master Chorale, presenting the music of jazz greats Duke Ellington and Mary Lou Williams. And John Clayton premieres his new work, Sacred Dreams, Righteous Theme, June 10th and 11th at Walt Disney Concert Hall, lamasterchorale.org. I'm Caitlin Hernandez, the lead reporter for our new project, Queer LA. Over the next year, we'll help you discover new things, find more queer friends, and figure out big life decisions on the LA Report and LAist.com slash Queer LA. LAist Studios. Hi, it's Nick Roman. And before we get going, I want to tell you that this is our June membership drive at LAist 89.3. And the fact of the matter is this. LAist is facing a funding gap that could affect the way we plan ahead for another year of important news coverage. People like you giving what you can to support our newsroom and this podcast really adds up. So become an LAS member today to protect your independent source of trustworthy local news. Give now at LAS.com slash join. And thanks. Okay, here we go. Today on the L.A. Report, Amtrak and Metrolink trains started running again through southern Orange County. The latest restart after months of interruptions from sliding bluffs near the tracks. Well, guess what? They've had to stop again. One down, two labor deals to go for Hollywood producers, but the two remaining contracts still to negotiate are the toughest two. And do you have lifeguard skills? Well, there's a public pool ready to give you a whistle and a job. It's Monday, June 5th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. Still no Metrolink or Amtrak trains running through South Orange County. They'd been running again a week ago, but were stopped yet again when the sliding bluff below San Clemente's Casa Romantica Cultural Center kept on sliding. Here's L.A.S. senior reporter Jill Replogle. City contractors have been working for the past two weeks to compact the soil on the bluff behind Casa Romantica to prevent further sliding. But on Monday morning, the land started to slide again. Photos show major cracks across the hillside. The San Clemente coast has had several major landslides over the past year. That's likely in part because the unusually wet winter saturated the soil, but also at fault, experts say, is coastal development, sea level rise, and the lack of consistent sand replenishment on local beaches. Amtrak is busing Pacific Surfliner passengers around San Clemente. Metrolink trains are only operating as far south as the Laguna Niguel Mission Viejo station. For LAS 89.3, I'm Jill Replogle. And Jill says Casa Romantica is open to visitors, but the staff is keeping an eye on that sliding bluff. Now to labor news and the weekend announcement that the Directors Guild of America had agreed to a new three-year contract with Hollywood Studios and streamers. The Directors Guild says it made gains on wages and streaming residuals and won protections that will keep actors safe from live ammunition on set. The deal comes as the Writers Guild remains on strike and just before SAG-AFTRA begins negotiations on a new contract for movie and TV actors. So what's next on the Hollywood labor front? Here's L.A. It starts an entertainment reporter, John Horn. I talked to a screenwriter over the weekend. He doesn't think there's any scenario in the next couple of weeks where the Writers Guild are able to even have negotiations. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers is going to go to work on the SAG deal. They may not even speak to the writers until July 1st at the earliest. And that would mean the strike by the Writers Guild will nudge up close to the 100-day mark. But John Horn says if the producers are able to strike a deal with SAG-AFTRA, that would be good news for striking scriptwriters. Why? Well, because the interests of SAG-AFTRA members in many ways mirror those of the Writers Guild. The twin ports of L.A. and Long Beach are running again today. Shipping companies say port operations were disrupted Friday when union dock workers staged a work slowdown. The 22,000 dock workers, all members of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, have been working without a contract for nearly a year. They say contract talks with the shippers have been crawling along. Bloomberg reporter Laura Curtis covers the ports. The contracts appear to have stalled over issues of pay at this point. They've had 
breakthroughs on tentative agreements on other sticky issues like automation and some benefits, but what remains is pay. And Bloomberg's Laura Curtis says one terminal in the port of L.A. remains closed. There are reports of work slowdowns at the ports in, uh, in Oakland and Seattle. Laura Curtis says some shippers worried about delays at the ports on the West Coast have moved cargo to U.S. ports on the East Coast and along the Gulf of Mexico. The ports of L.A. and Long Beach have seen a decline in cargo in the last year. After a break, okay, everybody out of the pool. Why? There's no lifeguard. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Ted Lasso, which has won back-to-back Emmys for Outstanding Comedy Series. At the end of this podcast, you can hear comments from Ted Lasso actors Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple. Ted Lasso is streaming on Apple TV Plus. This LAist podcast is supported by the Los Angeles Master Chorale, presenting the music of three American originals, Duke Ellington, Mary Lou Williams, and John Clayton, on June 10th and 11th at Walt Disney Concert Hall. Jazz greats Ellington and Williams created major sacred choral works that grew out of the African-American church tradition. Backed by the Clayton Hamilton Jazz Orchestra, John Clayton premieres his new work, Sacred Dreams, Righteous Theme. Tickets available at lamasterchorale.org. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Across Los Angeles, only 50 percent of the Asian American community is registered to vote, and in some parts it's less than that. Ian Camus is aiming to push that percentage up with the Asian American Voter Empowerment Project. Ian works with the Filipino Worker Center. He says the Voter Empowerment Project is now underway in Eagle Rock, where there are nearly 5,000 Asian American voters who can't vote because they're not registered. We're out there, right, talking to people. We got, a, we got a booth out there saying, hey, are you registered to vote? You know, often in language, too, so that folks, particularly those who may be perhaps new citizens, right, or those who may not speak English fluently, right, are able to feel that connection. Asian Americans are the third largest racial demographic in L.A., but a recent report from UCLA and Loyola Marymount found they lack the voting power to put their preferred candidates into office. You know, if you're a kid in L.A., there's really nothing like a hot summer afternoon cooling off with your buddies at the local public pool. And there's nothing more disappointing than seeing the gates to that pool locked because there's no lifeguard to keep everybody safe. L.A.'s senior health reporter Jackie Fortier says that's the kind of summer we might see in Southern California if we can't find more lifeguards. Public pools may have shorter hours and offer fewer lessons because lifeguards are in short supply. Darrell Walker is the recreation superintendent for the city of Pasadena. He says low pay and rigorous testing makes other jobs more tempting. If I'm paying a lifeguard with $19 an hour, they can go over and get $19 off at Target and they don't have to do all the training. Why would they not go over there? Pasadena doesn't have a lifeguard shortage, but Walker hears from other SoCal rec departments who are struggling. According to the American Lifeguard Association, about half of the nation's public pools will be forced to close their doors or reduce hours this summer. For LAS 89.3, I'm Jackie Fortier. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. The LA Report is produced by Michael Cosentino, along with producer Libby Rainey. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. Join us again tomorrow for the LA Report. You know, you can read more at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or just listen on the radio at 89.3 FM. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please become an LAist member today at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Ted Lasso. Here's Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca Walton. She became the owner of the AFC Richmond Football Club after her divorce from Rupert. 
Rupert's the love of her life. And she'll have a stronger day and then a weaker day. And it's because she had wanted that with him and he chose. She cannot have Rupert steaming out in front. She cannot have it. And there's even a point where she goes to Ted's room and says, you know we have to win this. Like, trying to be cool about it, but make sure we do. And Ted, in his usual way of saying, look, you've already won because you've become a stronger person and seen the light. And she's like, yeah, 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 beat them. Juno Temple plays Keely Jones, a model turned public relations consultant for the team. In season three, she gets a girlfriend, her PR firm's financial backer, Jack. Throughout all the seasons, it's very clear that Keely is bisexual and has spent a lot of time hitting on Rebecca. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be a fun one to play out because it's cool to have her, you know, have a romance with a woman that's another strong, independent woman and getting all this done herself. I think they're going to definitely feel a lot for a lot of the different characters. Rebecca's storyline, Nate's storyline, Ted's storyline, Roy, Jamie, like all these characters that are still going through these really... Com Sam, Christo, and also Zava coming in and kind of shaking everything up for a minute. I just hope as an actor that I bring what they want from me, you know, because I think Keely's a really precious character. I love her a lot. She's taught me a lot about being kinder to myself. I'm definitely my own worst enemy, and I think she's somebody that really helps people to see the best sides of themselves. That's Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple from the Emmy-winning Apple TV Plus original comedy series, Ted Lasso. Ma, pa, te presento a mi novia Luna. Hola, mucho gusto. Eric Galindo, co-host of Wild here, and this season, I'm going to tell you a fictional love story. The type of story that feels like a movie. It was inspired by my life. The woman I was dating, off and on again for a minute, comes to me and says she wants to move to Milwaukee. You're looking at the newest anchor for YWCC News, baby! I'm going to be the face of Milwaukee's leading news source. It was a road trip adventure across America. I was steeped in love and in one of the most confusing relationships of my life. This is a Southeast LA rom-com. It's the kind of fictional audio drama that forces you to confront parts of yourself. From LA's studios, listen to Wild Season 2, I Think I'm Falling in Love. Catch the new season on NPR One, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.